If you are planning a visit to Walt Disney World anytime soon, things are most likely going to be slightly different from when you have visited before, or if you've never been before, that it'll be probably different to what you had expected and had been planning for. Last week I did a video all about the things you now need to plan for in advance of visiting Disney World, so today I'm going to tell you all the other changes you may expect to find when you visit. My name is Sophie from Most Magical Guides and I make videos all about how to plan your own most magical trips to Walt Disney World and Disneyland Paris and even do vlogs of my own trips. So if that's the type of content you like, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. So now let's dive into all the differences you might experience when visiting Walt Disney World. First off, let's talk about the parks. So now you need park pass reservations to even enter the parks. This was something that was brought in once the parks reopened in 2020 and you can no longer just turn up and go into any park you feel like. You have to book them in advance. This does now mean that you do need to plan an itinerary ahead of your trip. Someone like me, who loves planning, always did their itinerary, but for a lot of people they just like to see what they felt like doing on that day, but unfortunately that's not possible anymore. The good news is you can book your park pass reservations all the way up until January 2024, and as soon as you have your tickets booked, you can actually book them in. You also do not need to book park pass reservations for Disney water parks or for Universal Studios, it's just the four main Disney World theme parks. Something else that has changed is park hopping. Now UK tickets usually come with park hopper as standard so you can visit multiple parks in one day but now you have to wait until 2 p.m to be able to park hop. Previously you could go whenever you fancied but now you have to wait until a set time. After 2 p.m you can go to any other park and go to as many as you like and hop around as much as you like but you just have to wait till that certain time frame. Something people used to like doing was checking out crowd calendars to get an idea of how busy the parks were going to be when they were visiting and what days of the week to visit each theme park. But sadly, these have kind of become irrelevant now because in this year, the parks have been exceptionally busy. There's not really a down season anymore or a low season where it's quieter. And you can never quite tell which parks are gonna be busy on which days because they all seem to be busy all days. I would say that the general rules of thumb that we had before with crowd counts are probably the same. September and January are probably quieter seasons, but they will still be busier than previously. There are a few reasons why the parks are so busy at the moment one of them being that the parks are now open to international travelers as international travel has now reopened so everyone that had postponed and rescheduled trips are now able to finally visit Walt Disney World again and of course it's also the 50th anniversary celebrations so lots of people are visiting for this so great news is that character meet and greets are now back in the parks this was something that people had been missing out on how you couldn't really get up close and interact with them but you can now take photos up close again and even get those hugs obviously the big things to mention that are different now are Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes. The free fast passes are no more. Instead they have been replaced by the paid for Genie Plus and Lightning Lane system. In my video all about the things you now need to plan in advance for Walt Disney World I did a whole section on Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes and how they work and I'll put that down below so you can go and check that video out. But basically Genie Plus is what has replaced fast passes and you can pay $15 per day per person to skip the queue for up to 40 rides across Walt Disney World. Realistically, you'll probably get three or four rides in. And the one good thing is you can split it across different parks, unlike Fast Pass, where you could only make them for one specific park. Individual lightning lanes are for the most popular rides at Walt Disney World that aren't included in Genie Plus. Instead, for these rides, you pay individually and the prices fluctuate throughout the year. They tend to range between seven and $17, depending on how busy the parks are and when you are visiting. And they can be a good way if there are rides that you absolutely cannot miss on getting on them you simply have to pay unfortunately if you are a family or a group this can quickly add up i'm heading back to walt disney world this september so i'll do a big video all about genie plus and lightning lanes my personal experience and i'm also going to be doing a video soon about why i've added genie plus to my stay something else that's worth noting is that the covid restrictions that were in place in walt disney world such as wearing masks and distancing are now gone there are currently no restrictions in place but it is worth noting that this can always change as Disney do take advice from the CDC if things were to develop and change. Dining is also now a bit different at Walt Disney World. At the moment not all of the restaurants have reopened. Really famous popular restaurants such as 1900 Park Fair, we had the character dining, or places like Akershus in Epcot. We don't talk about Akershus. I've experienced that restaurant so you don't have to. It's the only restaurant I recommend
recommend people avoid. So I'm kind of not that sad that it's not reopened, honestly. <laughs> Combining the fact that not all the restaurants have reopened yet and it is just super busy at the moment, it is becoming really difficult to get dining reservations. If you are staying on site at a Disney World Hotel, the great news is you can book at the 60 day mark and you can book 10 days of your trip at a time. This really helps you get ahead. I'm gonna do a video soon all about how to book dining reservations and how to get the hard to get ones. But this tip, if you're staying on site, definitely do that because you can get the reservations that off-site guests cannot see yet because they can only book at 60 days. So definitely use that to your advantage. Something else we have not seen return yet is the Disney dining plan. This was great for people who do a lot of dining at Disney World because it could work out slightly cheaper. They had a different range of packages and different prices. So it's kind of flexible to what you need. Because all the restaurants are not open at the moment and because it's just so busy and it's hard to get dining reservations, the dining plan has not returned. At the moment, Disney just cannot guarantee that people who purchased the Disney dining plan would be able to get reservations. So I think that is one of the main reasons we have not seen its return yet. For Brits, we used to get the free Disney dining plan deal. So you would get all of your meals covered during your trip with it, which was a, such a fantastic deal. People are often talking about when will this return? And I think sadly, it's probably not going to. Disney now have replaced this so you get a dining credits offer instead. It isn't as good as a dining plan, frankly, because you are gonna still have to pay out of pocket for food whilst you are there. But because they're getting so many bookings, I don't think there's any incentive for them to bring back the full free dining plan offer anytime soon. It is worth noting that the dining costs at Disney World have increased over the past couple of years. That is just something to factor in so you can add that into your budget. Something that is new and very interesting is that some quick service locations in Disney Springs have been asking you how much you'd like to tip. Now, typically quick service locations, you don't tip up because you order at the counter, take the food yourself and seat yourself. So because you're not having a server or any service, you don't tip. During the pandemic, quick service locations that did open were asking people if they would like to leave tips as a thank you for the staff for remaining working during the pandemic. But we're seeing that still happen now, even though things have kind of returned to normal. The thing I find very interesting is that they tend to be asking how much would you like to tip rather than would you like to tip, which kind of makes people feel like they are obligated to join in this service. It is worth noting, in quick service locations, you do not have to tip. If you do have a server or someone who is serving you behind the counter, that is really fantastic. You may want to, but seeing as they are asking you this whilst you're paying, you don't really know if the food or what you're gonna experience in the restaurant is worth the tip. So it is a bit unusual. I just wanted to add this in there just in case when you get to a quick service restaurant in Disney Springs and they ask you this and you're a bit shocked and like, where does this come from? This is not normal. But this does seem to be something that we are seeing now and hearing about, so it's just, up to you whether you want to tip or not. Quick service, as I say, typically you don't tip. So it's just down to a personal choice whether you want to or not. There have also been lots of changes at the Disney World Resorts. As I mentioned earlier, the offers for Brits have now changed. Instead of deals like the free Disney dining plan, you're getting things like a Disney dining credit. This year, it was a lower amount. If you've got a booking next year, it's up to $1,200 in dining credits, which is pretty good. You also still get the free memory maker. You get the 14 days for the price of seven tickets. You also get the $200 gift card. But this year they've also added two free tickets to see Drawn to Life by Cirque du Soleil. Sadly, a lot of the benefits have been removed from staying at the hotels. There's no longer any free magic bands. There's no longer any fast passes. You no longer get the extra magic hours. Instead, hotel guests can enter the parks 30 minutes early every single day ahead of day guests which can help you get straight to the front of queues for the most popular rides but 30 minutes isn't really a long enough time to get lots of benefit from if you are staying at a deluxe resort two nights a week you can go to either epcot or magic kingdom you have to check in advance which days they are being offered for those parks and you can stay for two hours extra in the evening. Again, this is good because there are far fewer guests and it's a great time to experience the park, but it is very, very late at night. So for families, this might be difficult to get the benefit from. Something that hasn't been around for a few years, but is still worth mentioning, is you do not get free parking at the Disney World resorts. 
You do have to pay per night for parking if you're staying at these resorts, but you do get free park parking. So you can actually save money this way. For example, if you stay at a value resort, it costs $15 a night to park in the hotel, but it costs $25 a day to park in the park. So you would still be saving money, even though you still have to pay to park at your resort now. Something else you will notice that is different at the hotels is that you will not get housekeeping or mousekeeping as it's known every day of your trip. Instead, every couple of days, they will come in to kind of empty bins and things like that. And if you want the whole room cleaned and your sheets to be changed and new towels, you may actually have to phone up and request this. When the pandemic first started and Disney had reopened, they were offering you a voucher if you were to decline mousekeeping, but they no longer do this. Instead, it is just how it is now. You're paying to stay at the hotel, but you aren't gonna get a daily clean. As I say, you are able to call the front desk and request this. So if you do need more things, more amenities, more towels, or you would like a clean, then definitely do this. Don't feel like you just have to wait until they turn up because you don't quite know how many days in between a clean it may be. It is worth still mentioning there are some benefits to staying at the Disney resorts, such as the free transportation. All the hotels have free buses to get to the parks and Disney Springs, but some of them also have extra modes of transportation, such as the Skyliner, the monorail and ferries and boats. One of the other benefits that I mentioned earlier was the ability to book your dining for up to 10 days at the 60 day mark. You can also do this with tours and experiences such as Savi's workshop, which is super popular and sells out very quickly. I would say this is a massive benefit. If you're planning to do lots of dining at Disney and lots of tours and experiences, this can really help you get those hard to get reservations. One of the other perks is that if you are thinking of buying the individual Lightning Lane passes, you can do this at 7 a.m. Whereas people staying off site have to wait until the parks open. This gives you the best chance of getting the reservations for these because they are hard to get rides. I'm also going to run down some things that are different now, but are not specifically to do with Disney, but are to do with visiting Florida. One of them being flights. So flights did become super duper expensive for a long time. And we are starting to slowly see that price coming down, but you most likely are gonna be paying a bit more for flights than you have previously. At the moment, we're seeing lots of chaos at the airports with canceled flights and lost luggage. Luckily, fingers crossed, at the moment, it seems long haul flights seem to be running. They aren't the flights that are getting canceled. That tends to be more short haul flights, but we are seeing people having issues with lost luggage. One way to get around this is to make sure that you split up your items across different bags and put toiletries and a few days clothing into something you can take in the cabin yourself with you. And then that way you have things with you just in case your bag doesn't turn up when you do. Something we're seeing people do a lot is flying to other airports in Florida because it is slightly cheaper than flying to Orlando. If you fly to Tampa or Miami, you can get better prices, but it is worth mentioning you obviously need to then get to Orlando from those destinations, so be sure to factor that cost in. TUI have also started doing flights to a new airport called Melbourne, and there they also do do transfers for you to certain hotels. So if you are flying with TUI, that is something you may experience. So it's worth noting that there is a brand new airport in Florida as well. Something else that has changed since you've probably last visited is the Magical Express is no more. Instead, you now have to have a paid for service with either Mears or the Sunshine Flyer. It's the exact same thing, it's just paid for now. Of course, you can also choose to do Uber or Lyft, but just be aware of surge pricing because you can get one journey there's a reasonable price but then another journey that is three or four times the amount to get to the airport you could also have a private transfer there are taxi companies or shuttle services that do this so it is worth looking around just to see what would be the best option for you if you are thinking of hiring a car again there may be some differences Car hire prices skyrocketed as during the pandemic, a lot of the car hire companies sold off their fleet. So because they have far fewer cars now, the prices are much more expensive. The past few months, we have started to see those prices creep down slowly. So it is worth regularly checking to see if you can get a better price. But it is worth noting that you're probably gonna pay more than you did 
previously. Something else that you may experience that is different to previously is that Disney is now a cashless preferred destination. So that basically means they would rather you pay on a card than with cash. Now, they will still accept cash, they're not gonna refuse it, but I would suggest if you can have the option of taking cards with you, then definitely do that. You can of course use credit cards or you can use travel cards. I've recently been using Starling and I absolutely love it. It's super easy to use, there's an app with it so you can easily see what you're spending. When you buy anything, it sends you a notification to let you know how much in the local currency and UK pounds you've spent. And you can also get a really great exchange rate and no fees. This is a really good option for when you're traveling because you're not having to worry about if your credit card are gonna charge you a lot and all of the restrictions with that. Something else worth mentioning is that the exchange rate is now very, very bad. It's dire. I think it's the worst it has been in the past 40 years. So this does mean when you visit Florida, things will be more expensive than they were. If you are going on a rescheduled or postponed trip, it is worth putting a little bit more money into your budget just to accommodate this because things are gonna naturally cost a bit more than you were anticipating before. So that is a summary of everything that's gonna be different now when you visit Walt Disney World. Yes, there are a few more things you need to plan for, you may need to budget a bit more for, or you may have to change your plan slightly to what you were doing before, but you're still gonna be able to have a fantastic time. I really hope this information has been helpful and given you a rough idea of the things you may need to consider when you're gonna go and visit Walt Disney World now. Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, I hope you have a most magical day. Bye-bye.